God can work through each and every one of us. And God desires to work through us to do things that we can't even imagine he can do in our lives. All we have to do is surrender our will to his. He has a divine purpose and a divine destiny for each and every one of us. And he can do great and mighty things through a heart and a mind that is willing to let him do great things. On Friday, we had a great fellowship with the youth as we went to Carowinds. Wonderful time of fellowship. I thank the youth ministry for that opportunity for us to come together to fellowship and enjoy one another. Let us pray. Father God, we're grateful for this privilege to come together. We're grateful, Lord God, because you have been so faithful. And God, in this day and age, in this time in our lives, we need you more than we've ever needed you before. So speak your word from heaven. Speak into our hearts. Speak into our souls, Lord God, that we may be drawn closer to you. Holy Spirit, have your way. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 1, I want to look at verses 3 through 11. Philippians chapter 1. Verses 3 through 11. Philippians chapter 1. Verses 3 through 11. And it reads. I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. It is right for me to feel this way about all of you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I am in change or defending the confirmation or confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. God can testify how I long for all of you with all the affection of Christ Jesus. And this is my prayer, that you may love, that your love may abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that you may be able to discern what is best and may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ, to the glory and praise of God. Today, I want to talk on, I thank God for you. I thank God for, for you. Paul was a lover of God's people. Paul was a lover of the church. Paul was a Jew who was born in the Roman city of Tarsus. Paul was also a Roman citizen. His Jewish name was Saul, but his Roman name was Paul. He didn't change his name after conversion. He just began to use his Roman name. Acts chapter 13, verse 9, it says, Then Saul, who was also called Paul. No, his name didn't change, but he began to use his Roman name because he was going to take the gospel to the Gentiles. God was sending him to those who knew not the God of creation. So he used his Roman name because his Roman name would get him access. His Roman name would allow them to accept him, to hear what he has to say. And so he used his name, Paul, his Roman name. Paul loved God. Paul also loved the church. But there was a time when he didn't love the church. 
but he still loved God. In his misunderstanding of who God is and what God was doing through Jesus Christ, he used to persecute Christians. He, he laughed and, and was filled with joy when Stephen fell dead at his feet. But on the Damascus Road, he met the Savior for himself. And God transformed his whole way of thinking and transformed his whole life. Now he became one of the greatest missionaries ever known to mankind. He began to start churches all over the land, and then he not only started them, but he wrote back letters to them, showing his love and his concern for the churches. And when he wrote letters to the church, he would always tell them that he thanked God for them. Now, the churches were not perfect. The churches, they had some problems. But even though they had problems, he said, I thank God uh -huh. Uh -huh, for you. Amen. The church at Corinth had some major problems. Amen. They had some struggles. They, they had some issues. Yeah. Yeah. You see, in the church at Corinth, they were fighting amongst one another. Yes, sir. They were fighting over who was the true leader of the church. Mm -hmm. Some said, I follow Paul. Mm -hmm. Some said, I follow Paulus. Others said, I follow Cephas. Others said, I follow Christ. They were immature in their faith, and, and they, they, they condoned the sexual immor immorality that was going on. One man was sleeping with his stepmother, his mother-in-law. Others were seeing women who walked on the streets at night. Talk about the folk in the church. Instead of settling their problems amongst themselves, they were taking one another to court. They had a lot of questions on marriage and, and whether they should or not they should eat food that's been sacrificed to idols. And even though Paul was aware of all the issues and the problems that were going on in the church, Amen. hear what he says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. I always thank my God for you. Because of his grace given to you in Christ Jesus. For in him you have been enriched in every way. With all kind of speech and with all kind of knowledge. Although they had some major issues and they had some major problems. God had still given them grace. He had given them, even though they had issues, power. Power to speak the word of God. And he also gave them the knowledge that they needed in order for them to effectively speak for God. Uh -huh. No, the church was not perfect. Yes, sir. And Paul was aware of what was going on. Yes, but even with his knowledge of the imperfections of the church, Paul starts off his letter by saying, I thank God for you. Amen. In the church at Colossus, there was doctrinal heresies that were abounding in the church. They were coming into the church. and A doctrine is a teaching, and we follow the doctrine, the teaching of Jesus Christ. But they had some heresies, some false teaching that contradicts the word of God that was going on. And these heresies and th these false teachings were causing division amongst the people. Uh, these heresies, these teachings, they departed from the truth of God's word. These teachings were, were mixed with paganism, ungodly teaching. They, they were combined that with the apostles' doctrine teaching. They combined it with Judaism and, and Gnosticism. Now, Gnosticism was a, it was a complex religious philosophy. It taught that salvation could only be achieved through secret knowledge. Yeah, Gnosticism. It was a philosophy that was blended with other religions that became a philosophy. And they were teaching this amongst one another. They had some problems in the church. Yeah, the Gnostics, they, they're, they're teaching. They denied the divine creation of the universe. And they believed that there were many angelic beings or spiritual uh, intermediaries that existed between God and man. And they believed in worshiping these angelic beings. Or oh, they had some issues. Uh-huh, in the church. 
And the Jewish section of the church, they were, they were legislative in their worship and in their nature. Uh, they retained and still believed in the Mosaic law, the law of Moses. They imposed circumcision amongst everybody. They followed those dietary restrictions and observed the, the Jewish festivals. Yeah, they had some issues in the church. They had the false teaching that, that, denied, that did not deny Christ who he was, but they dethroned him and said that he was not actually a savior that died on the cross. They denied him as being the creator of the universe and his death had no salvation in it. There were some issues in the church. Yet hear what Paul said in his letter to the Colossians in Colossians 1 verse 3. He says, we always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ when we pray for you. Church has some issues. Can we talk about one more church? The church at Thessalonica. They were concerned about when Christ was going to come back. Some of them stopped working because they figured Christ was going to come back. But then when folks started dying, they said, hey, wasn't Christ going to come back before folks started dying? And so they got complacent because they were just waiting on the return of Christ. Some start to sink back and fall back into their immorality that was in the culture of that day. They had social cliques in the church. They even had problems with the spiritual leaders of the church. And some of them even had problems with Paul. Church. Got some issues. Church. Got some problems. But Paul says in his letter to them in 1 Thessalonians 1 and 2, we always thank God for all of you and continually mention you in our prayers. And in our scripture for today, the church of Philippi, they were being attacked by false teachings. There was few that was going on between two prominent women in the church. They, they just couldn't get along. Them, they caused so much problems amongst themselves that people started to take sides in the church. And it caused division. But Paul says in our scripture for today in his letter to the Philippians in chapter 1 verse 3. I thank God every time I remember you. Paul was aware of the problems that plagued the early church. Paul was aware of the problems in each church that he wrote the letters to. But in spite of all the mess and chaos that was going on among the people of God, he still thanked God for them. I'm like Paul. I'm aware that we have our problems within the church. I'm aware that we have our struggles and we have our issues in the church. But in spite of all that we got going on, I still thank God for you. Are things perfect? No, because we're imperfect people. But I still, like Paul, I, I thank God for you. I thank God for you because I see God doing a work in your lives. I thank God for you because I see the spiritual growth that is going on in your lives. But I must be honest, as pastor, sometimes I get discouraged. Uh, I was in a class with the preachers on this morning, didn't realize how uh, in sync this message and our teaching was going to be on, on this morning. Sometimes just being a preacher, I want to give up and think, is it worth it at all? When the same thing happens over and over again and every time you, you come and only the same folk there, there isn't worth it. But see, that's when I operate out of the flesh. But when I turn to God, well, you see, I'm a man like everybody else and I get discouraged like everybody else. But, but when I turn to God, 
God begins to touch my heart and he begins to touch my soul. And I thank God for Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church. No, we're not perfect, but we ain't what we used to be. And we're headed towards what God will have us to be. Sometimes it takes a little longer than we wanted to take. But, but I thank God for Mount Pleasant. No, we're not perfect. But we are God's people. Yeah, I'm like Paul. I don't know all the things that are going on, but I know enough. But even with what I know, I thank God for you. I'm like Paul. Not only did Paul thank God for them, but he prayed for them. And the same prayer that Paul prayed for the church, I pray for you. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 11. Paul says, for this reason, since the day we heard about you, you have not stopped, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. And this is why. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. God did not, Paul rather, did not pray that God would just automatically change them. But he prayed that, that they would grow. Come to an understanding of who God is and, and how God will have them to live. That they will grow in their spiritual understanding of what Christianity is all about. And that the Holy Spirit will give them power that they may live a life worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. That's my prayer for you. That you will grow in a knowledge of who God is. That you will grow in a knowledge of what God has called you to do in life. I pray that God, by the power of his Holy Spirit, will help you live a life that's worthy of the blood of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will be able to produce good fruit whenever you go out and minister in his name. I, I pray that God will have good fruit whenever you go in the name of Jesus Christ. That you will grow in a knowledge of God. That your understanding of God will grow more and more each time you come and stand in this, sit in this place. I pray that God will most of all give you strength to endure life. Because life is not easy. And many of you share with me your struggles in life. And oftentimes I, I hurt because you hurt. I, I hurt because of the pain that you go through. And I wish, oh how I wish that I could solve your problems. How I wish that I could take your pain away. But I can't take your pain away. But I can pray that God would give you strength. That you may be able to stand and, and have endurance uh, as you go through the trials in life. Uh, I pray that God will give you the strength uh, to endure the trouble that comes your way. And that you won't be overcome by the trials of life. Oh, I pray that God will give you patience. Not just with other folk, but patience with yourself. You see, it's hard enough to have patience for other folk. But it's even harder to have patience with ourselves. But we say we're going to do this and we're going to do that. But we even let ourselves down in things that we said we want to do for God. But I pray that God, yes, will give you patience. The church has many problems. And we can point out problem after problem. We can talk about flaw after flaw all day long. We can place blame here. We can place blame there. But what we should be doing is thanking God for the church. Amen. Instead of focusing on where we fall short at, we ought to thank God for the church. 
Instead of talking about what should be done or what should have been done, we ought to thank God for the church. Not only thank God for the church, but we should pray with joy. Because we must realize that we all belong to God and we are still a work in progress. If we focus on being thankful for one another instead of blaming and pointing fingers at one another, it will help us as we build and establish godly relationships with one another. Yeah, I charge you today to stop complaining about what the church ain't doing or what the church should be doing and be thankful for the church. Because through all our flaws, huh, through all our problems, God is still moving. Through all our shortcomings, God is still saving souls. Yeah. Through all the things that we get wrong, God is still hearing and answering our prayers. I thank God for the church. How can Paul feel this way? When he looks at all the mess that's going on in the church, he ought to be overwhelmed and frustrated. Paul ought to feel like giving up, saying these knuckleheads ain't never going to get it right. But you see, his confidence ain't in the church. But his confidence is in the Lord. We can't put our trust in one another. Because we'll let one another down. You can't even put your trust and confidence in me. I might let you down. Not purposely, but I can't fulfill all your needs. A confidence oftentimes is misplaced. That's how we get hurt in the church. That's how we get frustrated in the church. Because our confidence has been misplaced. Paul says in Philippians 1, verse 6. Being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. Paul's confidence and my confidence ain't in the church, but it's in God. You see, we didn't start salvation in us. And because we didn't start the salvation process in us, we can't see it through till it's done. But it was God who began this great work in us. And God is still working. Working in us to bring about his perfect work. And God, through Jesus Christ, will complete the work that he had begun. And so don't get discouraged my brother. Don't give up my sister. Keep doing the good work. Keep fighting the faith of Christ. Keep staying on the battlefield. Don't get weary in well doing. For in due season you shall receive your reward if you don't give up my confidence and your confidence cannot be in the church but it has to be in God. I hear of so many great things that many of you are doing in the community. Keep up the good work. I, I hear the ideas and the things that you want to do in the church and the things that you feel God has placed on your heart. Keep working at it because God, he who started a great work, will continue with it until it's done. Sometimes we get it right. Sometimes we get it wrong. But keep on serving the Lord. Sometimes you may have to be on the battlefield all by yourself, but stay on the battlefield for your Lord. Sometimes you may get wounded along the way, but great is he that is in you, huh? that he that is in the world. Don't give up, my brother. Don't give up, my sister. God is doing a great work in you. You may not see the work that God is doing, but keep on working by faith, and one day you shall receive your reward. Yes, sir. He, God, he is the one that has called you out of darkness uh, 
into his marvelous light. He is the one that has a divine destiny purpose in your life. Nobody can understand what God is doing in your life. You just stay connected to God and stay connected to the church and God will work out his great work. Yeah, yeah, take our eyes off of what is seen and place our eyes on what is not seen. Because what we see is just temporary. But the things that we can't see is eternal through Christ Jesus. Take your eyes off the church and put your eyes on God. Yeah, I thank God for Mount Pleasant. No, we're not perfect. Yeah, we got some work to do. But God is able to do just what he said he will do. Take your eyes off of what's wrong and put your eyes on what's right. God Almighty knows more than we know about what's going on. And if God still allows us to come together every Sunday, if God allows us to come together every Wednesday, if God allows for us to sing, God allows for us to preach, God allows for us to pray, and God allows us to go out and minister in his name, God is still working. A good work in this church. We may fall out with one another from time to time, but that's what happens in a family. We fall out from time to time, but we don't separate from one another. God has given us the gift of forgiveness to where we can forgive one another. And when we forgive one another, that's God doing a great work in the church. Will we pray for one another? Will we see about one another? Will we edify one another? Will we encourage one another? Will we shake glad hands together? Will we break bread together? That's God doing a great work in the church. Paul knew the issues and the struggles of the church. But Paul did not put his confidence in this church. But he put his confidence in God. Paul been shipwrecked. Paul said he'd been naked and hungry. Paul was bit by a snake. Paul been through a lot. And he realized that he couldn't put his confidence in man. But his confidence was in the Lord. One Friday, God began a, a great work of salvation when Jesus was nailed to the cross. Yeah, he, began, he began a great work of salvation. Jesus, he could have called down a legion of angels to deliver him and to save him from this excruciating pain, but he didn't do it. He could have delivered himself and he could have came down from the cross, but he knew that God was doing a, a great work. And Jesus stayed on the cross for six long, excruciating hours. He died for people who did not love his father. He died for folk who did not accept his father, he died for folk that spit on him. He died for folk that beat him and whipped him all night long. He died for folk who put a crown of thorns on his head. He died for those who knew not his father in heaven. And even though the work was hard and even though the work was excruciating, his eyes were not on the people, but his eyes was on his father in heaven. And he hung there for six hours until he knew that it was done. The Bible says that he hung there and he screamed in a loud voice, My father, why have you forsaken me? Then he said, It is finished. And he hung his head and he died, died for our sins. 
He died for what Adam and Eve did in the Garden of Eden. He died for the sins that we've done and the sins that we're doing and the sins that we will do. Jesus died. He was doing a great work on the cross. It cost him his life, but he died. He knew how sinful we were, but yet and still, he died on the cross. He was doing a great work. There on Calvary, he died early on Sunday morning. God raised him from the grave with all power in his hands. And because he raised Jesus from the grave, there is power in the blood to raise us up out of our sins and, and give us a new home over in glory. He died that we may be set free from the penalty of sin. Jesus died that we may go into heaven. Ain't that good news? He didn't look at our sins, but he looked at our freedom. He didn't look at what we did wrong, but he was looking at the liberty that he was giving us by dying for our sins. God, through Jesus Christ, was doing a great work of salvation. And can I tell you something right now? He wants to do a great work in your lives. The blood that Jesus shed on Calvary was to set us free from sins and to give us a brand new life. A life that we couldn't get on our own. And he didn't leave us by ourselves. For salvation is still not yet complete. He paid the price. He began the great work of salvation. And every day that we get up and every day we minister in his name, we're working in that salvation. But one day he's going to finish his work. Salvation won't be complete until he comes back and get me. And it comes back and gets you. But ain't it good to know that he who began a great work in us. He is able to see it through till completion. And one day he's coming back. He's coming back to take those who have trusted in Jesus Christ. He's coming back to take those who've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. He's coming back to take those who've been born again over into a glory land. I'm so glad that Jesus began a great work in the church. That's why I thank God for the church. Although we're not perfect, although we mess up from time to time, God still loves us. God still looks out for us. God still keeps on blessing us. God still keeps being faithful because the blood of Jesus Christ is on us. So I thank God for the church because of Jesus Christ. Those of us who accept him as Savior have been born again. And so today, as pastor, at Mount Pleasant, I just want to say, I thank God for you. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be here today. And you, for the first time, may realize how much God loves you. He made a way through the blood of Jesus Christ that when we die here, and we're all going to die, unless we're still alive when he comes, but no man knows the day or the hour when the Son of Man shall appear. And so today, if you have yet to accept Jesus Christ, and you're ready to accept him as your Savior, we extend to you an invitation. If you're here today, you're looking for a church home, and you want to make this place, Mount Pleasant Missionary Baptist Church, your church home, will you come? Will you come on today? Will you come and let God begin a great work in you, a great work of salvation that he is able to complete? Will you come on today? If you're looking for a church home, will you come? 
if you feel God. Hallelujah. If you feel God. Move with all your heart. And you just believe that he'll save your soul. Will you come on today?